Hi, my name is Richard Ian Cox, and I'm playing Stanley Purdy in Chalkboard Prison. Well, the first thing I actually heard about Chalkboard Prison was when uh, Kurt stopped me outside a, um, an agency Christmas party, because we are both at the same agency. Uh, but I hadn't met him yet, and he hadn't met me yet. And, uh, and uh, he'd stopped me because he'd seen me um, on some episodes of Stargate. And, uh, and it just sort of twigged in him when, uh, when, when um, he saw me at the party that, that this might be something that, that I might be interested in, in this pitch of his uh, that uh, was based on his real life of you know, being a teacher in the prison system. And uh, of course the idea to me sounded remarkable and it sounded uh, very interesting and it certainly sounds like something that I would watch and something that I would be interested in. So when I got the opportunity to audition for it, uh, I was absolutely, um, I was absolutely up for it. I thought it would be a great idea. And so when I got a chance to read the script, um, I knew that I was, uh, that I was very interested in, in the show. And so luckily enough, um, uh, they picked me. So here we are today and I'm talking to you. Stanley Purdy is a man who is sort of, um, not necessarily at the end of his rope, but at the end of some of his options. He was a kindergarten teacher uh, and very happy as a kindergarten teacher. He, he did really well with the kids and he connected really well with the kids. And, and the thing for him that was exciting was having their aha moment, their moment of, um, of breakthrough, having and watching these kids really sort of start to live up to their potential and, and have these breakthroughs uh, as they went through his class and, and, and went through his year. Uh, but when his, his class gets downsized and his job gets made redundant, he sort of finds himself on the outs looking in and, and needing to find another option. And so when an option presents itself to him teaching in prisons, uh, initially he's, um, he's sort of rocked back on his heels a little bit, you know, coming into an environment that is very not like a kindergarten, very not like a children's school. Uh, but he starts to realize that he can still have those aha moments, those breakthrough moments. Uh, but now this time it's with people who really need the chance, who really need the second opportunity. They've had the chance as a kid, they've probably had more than a few aha moments as a kid, but now they find themselves back at square one and, and he is perfectly positioned and is the perfect person to help them through to the next phase of their lives. Yeah, um, like I said, I met Kurt at our agency Christmas party and, uh, and he was he was very pleasant and he was very nice and he was very apologetic for even sort of, you know, intruding on, on me uh, and, and I sort of immediately took a shine to him and it, once he started talking about this project and this idea, um, uh, I was intrigued. I thought it was, like I said, I thought it was a really, a really great concept and a really great idea. But when I actually got in to get into the audition, I got an opportunity to meet him a little bit more and then obviously booking the part I've managed to had I've been lucky enough to spend the last couple of days with him and his wife and his family um, and uh, and I think that um, that he's got such a great story and it really does deserve to be turned into a series or film or a project um, because it's uh, I think he's got a great message and I think that uh, I think he's got a great tale to tell and his energy is just that of a person that sort of uh, wants to make a difference. And, um, and not only has he obviously done that in his career as a teacher, in his career as a teacher in prisons uh, and in high school, but also uh, right now he's trying to make another difference in terms of getting this message out to the larger audience. And I think it's an important message to have. And, and it's counterbalanced with you know the, the character of his wife in the show. Um, who is an attorney who sort of sees the other end of the spectrum that you know people really do deserve to be incarcerated and that that's how they're going to potentially stop the the ills of the world whereas his you know uh, opportunity his uh, opinion is that it's on the flip side that once they get in there then he wants to rehabilitate them and get them back out there and i think that's a great message uh, that everybody deserves a second chance um well my understanding of it is uh, you know um as i said it, you know it's um I think Kurt found himself in a similar position where he needed to um, refocus uh, his career and refocus what he was doing at the time and, and, and found himself you know, uh, teaching prisoners and teaching uh, people who were incarcerated. Um, and, uh, and I think that you know, as anybody who's had 
a unique experience. Uh, I think there's a drive to tell a story, and Kurt definitely has that drive to tell stories. You know, he's a published author, he's an actor, uh, he teaches acting, he teaches theater, he understands story. Uh, and so obviously there, there's an understanding there that, that he would that he would have this kernel of, of, uh, of a story want to sort of mature and germinate and kind of, you know, come to fruition. And, and, it's, uh, and it's doing that now, you know. I mean, we're shooting a, a sizzle for it, so we're shooting a teaser to get people interested in the, uh, the concept and want to take it further, take it to series. Um, and I think that, uh, that this isn't the first step in the process, but it's certainly the launching pad. And we'll see where it goes. I think that it's an idea that resonates with people, and I think that it sits on two levels, the idea here that we're trying to, the story that we're trying to tell. Um, you know, obviously we have this notion of, of, um, of law and order as it, as it pertains to ourselves. We obviously and probably rightfully want people who have done wrong and who have sort of contravened our laws and have stolen from us or hurt us, we want them to go to jail. We want them to do their time. We want them to pay their price. Uh, but I think, you know, the other end of that is that there's a human being on the other end of that story. And, and some people are, yes, they're bad people. But, you know, a lot of people either didn't get a chance from the beginning or uh, they've taken a misstep and they've gone down a wrong road. And as we all know, a wrong decision can sort of befall another decision and another. My favorite one of my favorite, it's not a quote, so because I'm paraphrasing it, but the idea that we judge others by their actions and ourselves by our intentions is something that I think about a lot. When we look at other people doing wrong, when we look at other people breaking the law, we're judging them by their act. But we are very quick to give ourselves a break when we've made a mistake. And that's when we're judging ourselves by our intentions. And I think that if we can start to look at other people's intentions um, even when they've done wrong and even when their actions aren't right, I think that uh, we can start to open our minds and our hearts to the goodness that other people have in them. And I think that, uh, that at any time that's a good idea to sort of percolate on. But I think now more than ever, we need to have an idea of how we see other people and we need to be able to alter that idea, that concept, that notion of how we view others. And I think that doing it like this in this environment is, uh, is a way of really making it local, making it close to home. Uh, we have these prisons and we have these people in our communities and, and we can either lock them away and not deal with it or we can make a difference and we can try to see the flip side and we can try to make better people. Creating anything from nothing is challenging always challenging and and, um, and I think that anyone who steps outside of their normal life and makes an effort like this that puts a script together like this or a story together like this or brings people together like this they're motivated and they really are trying to change something and trying to change a landscape and trying to tell a story and, and I think that uh, if we can give them five minutes to hear the story to hear the idea, to listen to the concept, I think we're all better off for it. And it takes a lot of it takes a lot of resolve, and it takes a lot of hustle to make stuff like this happen. And, and uh, I think we have to we have to support that in every way that we can. So even just taking five minutes, just five minutes, fifteen minutes to take a look at something like this, I think you know we can all sort of start to make a change too.